more than human. Our project furthers the research agenda of RC7, exploring the integration of non-human agency within architecture, in the face of accelerating environmental collapse. Globally, and in cities such as London, anthropocentric growth continues to come at the expense of the non-human world. Access to nature is increasingly limited and unfairly distributed, and for those who live without it, studies show there can be detrimental physical and mental health effects. Our work questions how machine learning can be used to implement principles of ecological systems. It addresses three main topics. 1. Design for the more than human, how we can integrate human and non-human spaces equally. 2. Design for equal access to nature and, 3, the creation of an AI-powered sketch tool. This tool allows architects to quickly generate and test site-specific design configurations that can be adjusted through digital sketching. Live feedback is provided in the form of environmental massing models and floor plans, which can then be used to inform the developed design process. The sketch tool will be powered by a PIX2PIX Generative Adversarial Network, or GAN, which can be trained to perform image-to-image -image translations. By creating a data set of corresponding images, a GAN can be trained to generate new design proposals based on a sketch. The key to this process is the curation of the training data set. Whilst most architectural work with GANs has used data sets of existing or historical buildings, we are designing our own data sets. To achieve this, we are using procedural dependency graphs PDGs. PDGs are used to make infinite variations of a design, creating a procedural species of objects or architectural plans. When training a GAN with 3D datasets such as this one, we can embed 3D information using a depth map as the output image. This allows for the creation of a massing and zoning model from the generated images. Through our early GAN experiments we found the best way to recreate our PDG datasets was using colored sketch lines to represent heights. This GAN allowed for live sketching to control a massing model which is demonstrated here. Our final iteration of the massing GAN further rationalizes the sketching technique, by first applying a grid to the chosen site. The contours can then be sketched over this grid, creating a depth map and massing which themselves can be rationalized into modules. In order to develop the design beyond a massing model, our second series of GAN experiments explored the generation of plans. By sectioning the massing we can create a series of floor plates that can be used to train the GAN. Our developed plans add more environmental consideration, mapping the sunlight reaching the floor plate, allowing areas that receive direct sunlight to become predominantly non-human. The remainder of the floor plate is divided into rooms, with mixed human and non-human balconies wrapping the outer edge. The final plan dataset builds on our previous work by adding more environmental consideration and control. The floor plate is divided into a modular grid, and colored according to the lighting level of the space. This results in a floor plan that balances human and non-human spaces. The areas which receive most sunlight become meadows or glades within the urban landscape, whilst garden balconies provide integration between human and non-human areas. When tested with new input images the PIX2 PIX scan is able to produce a new plan that closely resembles the procedural dataset, successfully learning the meaning of the color-coded input and distributing spaces accordingly. Based on our procedural datasets and GAN experiments, we have developed a two-stage design process which balances human input, contextual data, and environmental analysis. The first stage involves the generation of the massing model. The initial mass is generated from the heights of the surrounding buildings using GIS data translated into grayscale colors. Our previous massing GAN is then used to allow sketch adjustments to be made to the massing model. This initial massing process can be repeated for any site. The final stage of massing is to analyze the sunlight reaching each point of the mass, at a range of elevations throughout the year. 
The level of shading of each point is averaged and represented by its color. Points that receive the most sun throughout the year are then removed. This creates a series of atriums that are angled to allow maximum sunlight to enter, creating habitats throughout the scheme suited to both humans, and non-humans. The second stage of the design process is the plan synthesis. The massing is sectioned to create floor plates, which are then color-coded with environmental data, and input into our pre-trained GAN. The following animation shows the complete process from the designer perspective. The first task is to locate and select the required site. Next, the designer will sketch the boundary of the chosen site to begin the massing process. The building height data will be used to generate the initial massing, by transferring the colors of the surrounding buildings to the site. The designer will also have the ability to adjust the contours using the sketch can developed in our earlier experiments. Sunlight analysis is then performed, creating a point cloud color to represent exposure to sunlight. The lightest points are then removed, carving atriums out of the model, which allow sunlight deep into the mass. This is the final step of the massing process. The next stage is plan generation. The model is sectioned, the cores distributed, and the environmental mapping applied to each floor plate. Within the plan synthesis tool, the designer is able to adjust the human to non-human balance. The ratio of open plan to pocketed spaces can also be controlled, as well as manual adjustments which can be made to each colored module. At this point the model and plans can be exported to other design software, or shared with consultants and other stakeholders, providing a basis for developed design. We have implemented the design tool on three sites within London. Site 1, Blackfriars. On a plot with a wide variety in scale and typology of context buildings, the massing process creates a form that mediates between each surrounding building. Site 2, Elephant Amp Castle. Characteristically of our design process, angled atriums are carved out of the mass creating stepped terraces that receive ample light throughout the day. Site 3, Soho. This plot is smaller than the previous two sites, and the process of sunlight carving creates fewer atriums, with more variation in form. To develop the sites beyond the initial massing model, we explored combining the layout and zoning of the plans with the original mass. The balconies are cut out from the mass, and begin to define the location of the primary openings in the façade. Sunlit areas become deep terraces that can be planted to support non-human inhabitation, whilst providing shading to the human areas. From the street, the façade varies in solidity and height, climbing to meet the tallest buildings yet also respecting the height of the smallest. In some areas, even forming a bridge over the street. Finally, we have further developed Site 1 to produce an architectural proposal. Commercial and residential areas are expressed separately through a material change, whilst the deep, Planted terraces provide a visual and physical link between the two uses. From the street the mass maintains an air of privacy, only hinting at the presence of the vast non-human spaces within. The carved atriums are lined with terraces which receive maximum daylight throughout the year, providing ideal habitats for non-human growth. Human spaces and windows are set back into the mass, shaded by cantilevered terraces overhead. Some areas are given primarily to the human, whilst others are inhabited solely by the non-human. Over time the planted areas will grow out of the terraces and begin to take over much of the façade, blending the human with the non-human.